Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, I want to do a video today talking about lasers on pistols. Okay, it's been a while since I did a gun video and uh, I thought this is a pretty good subject to talk about. Now today I have a Walther P22 for demonstration purposes here. Okay, it does have a, a mounted laser on it which is removable like all lasers usually are. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. Some are built into guns, but the majority of lasers you're going to have are going to be an accessory that you can attach to your rail. Okay. Um, this is a 22 long rifle semi-automatic pistol. Uh, it is safe right now. I have uh, snap caps in the magazine. They're clearly blue, so you can't mistake them for anything else. And there goes one on the floor. So you can see nothing in the chamber. All right. I will load a snap cap for this demo, okay? This does have a safety on it. Right now it is in a safe position. And what that does with this gun is it rotates a bar. I don't know if you could see it. But as I rotate the safety, you'll see a bar comes up in front of the uh, firing pin mechanism so this um, hammer does not hit it. All right, so that being said, I will for this video dry fire this once with the safety on. This is metal on metal. It's not going to be a big deal. Um, it is definitely not recommended to ever dry fire any of your 22 or other rim fire um, guns, period. It's just more likely to damage your, your firing mechanism, okay, your firing pin. So don't do it. But uh, if you have a center fire gun, obviously you can um, dry fire safely. It's fine. In fact, most manufacturers um, make you basically dry fire in order to uh, disassemble the gun or for other purposes. So it's totally fine for center fire, not for rim fire. So, uh, lasers. Let's talk about lasers for a little bit. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about, there's basically two things I want to cover in this video. The first one is uh, my opinions on lasers for self-defense, okay? And the different problems that may, you know, arise if you do, in fact, use a laser on your gun. The second part of this video is going to be talking about training, okay? I have a nice target behind me. I printed up my computer for free. By the way, these, these different websites, this one has to be targets, T-A-R-G-E-T-Z.com. They give you all these like PDF files so you can print your own targets. I think it's great. And when I first, I just printed this out, it's the first time I actually printed a target from the internet. And I thought, man, this is awesome. Why would you ever buy them? Then I thought, wait a minute. You know, ink cartridges for your, your printers these days, I mean, they're more expensive than the printers. You can get a $30 printer and then your ink is like 50 bucks. So, I mean, I mean, not always $50, but you know what I'm saying. So keep in mind, if you think this is awesome and you're going through ink like crazy, you know, weigh the benefits. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it is cheaper to buy a fat stack of cheap targets. But anyway, it was quick, it was easy, so if you're ever at a Targets, hop on these different websites and you can, you know, print them up. Um, and I, I'm not saying this is the best site. In fact, uh, they have a lot of um, Targets basically for, I would say the majority of their Targets aren't like fun, cool Targets like you kind, you'd probably want. They're more or less Targets for, um, say, a sighting in a, a scope on a gun, or very precise, you know, grid, stuff like that. So anyway, I just printed the simplest one I could, which is a one dot um, bullseye. Uh, one dot, yeah, of course it's one dot. It's a one inch bullseye, all right? Just keep that in mind. So anyway, um, I wanna talk about how you can use your lasers for a training tool, which I think is, is fantastic. So the first part here is gonna be talking about self-defense, all right? Now, I personally do not carry a laser on my carry guns, okay? Um, for two reasons. The first reason being is that I don't, my particular lifestyle and where I live, I don't spend uh, a lot of time out away from my house at night, okay? Now this will change if you happen to say live in a city um, where there is more of a nightlife, then you may spend more time out and about at night when it's dark, okay? Now this is all talking about lighting conditions, obviously night being darker where lasers could be more beneficial, all right? I live in the woods, I live in the mountains, it's quiet. I mean, at nighttime, it's like the whole town shuts off at six or seven o'clock. I mean, it's just boring. But that's just how it is, you know? Uh, even the stores close pretty early compared to a lot of places. There's not a whole lot of like 24 hour or anything around where I live. Um, so I really have a limited t experience out away from my home at night in the dark. Okay, that's the first reason I don't really carry a razor. Oh, a razor, <laughs> yeah. A laser um, on my my pistols. Um, the second reason is for me it really limits my options in carry. Okay, 
Um, you'll notice that if you do have a laser for your gun and you go to buy a holster, you have to get a specific holster for your laser and they're, more, they're usually more expensive, all right? Now, most holsters for guns are molded very specific to that gun. So it's very secure on your side or wherever it's mounted and it's not gonna move around or fall out, okay? So it's, it's following the exact profile of your gun. It's like a silhouette, okay? If you black this out completely, you're just looking at a silhouette. It's a simple shape. And they're molded, either Kydex or leather or whatever. So now, you add an accessory, whether it's a laser or a flashlight, what have you, you change the profile. This will no longer fit into those very snug holsters. You'd have to, you're limiting yourself to either one of two things, either a, a very um, generic holster that just has basically a big square pocket, so it's more versatile for different guns, or you're looking at getting something very specific, maybe custom made. Um, and there are some production holsters that are made for specific gun light combos, which I've seen. Uh, what's very popular is Glock and like a um, Streamlight flashlight accessory for your gun. All right, those are, they're very popular. It's more of a rounded flashlight. Uh, and then you'll find that with those, there is a market for um, production holsters, you know? But generally they're more expensive and the whole point here is you are limiting yourself, okay? So that's why I personally don't like them. Um, the, the real reason, going back to the first part here, is that I don't spend a whole lot of time out at night. So, during the day, from my own experience, lasers suck. They don't work during the day. They're just not powerful enough, okay? Now, you can get uh, green lasers or even more powerful red lasers. Um, you know, the generic laser for a pistol is about probably the 5 uh, milliwatt. Um, and, of course, there's, there's lasers on the market that are very affordable, even at 100 milliwatt. You know, and then you get up even higher than that. You're talking about the lasers you see in the videos that are like burning tape and lighting matches on fire. That's all cool and fun. But, and those will be brighter during the day. But I can tell you this specific laser on the wall here from about three or four feet away is uh, very visible. You can really see it. it. It picks up very nicely, okay? But if I go outside right now and it's a cloudy day, a cold, really bitter cold today, um, and I stand about three feet away, same scenario, same situation, uh, from a tree or from the side of my house, this dot almost completely disappears. I just cannot see it. Visually, it's doing nothing for me. So, specifically in a defensive situation, if I were to have to pull my gun, you know, and aim at my target during the day, I'm not going to see it anyway. Okay, so it's null and void, doesn't matter. That's why I personally don't carry them. But I think they have a very, very good positive role uh, for home defense. As everyone knows, um, when you get into a defensive situation, we all have this fight or flight thing, all right? And most people don't know if they are a fight person or a flight person, meaning either you're going to stand and hold your ground in a really bad situation or your body's just going to want to just get away from it, okay? It's one or the other. Either you, have, you have a defensive situation where there's an attacker, your, your stress level is, you know, through the roof. Like I said, there's one of two people. Either you're going to fight or you're going to flight, meaning get the heck out of there. All right, you don't want confrontation. Either you can't handle it or you don't know what to do or you're nervous about it. Whatever the situation is, you want to get away from it. You don't want to confront it. All right, and for the most part, you don't know what kind of person you are until you get into a situation like that. I think there's a lot of people out there that, that carry a gun and say, you know, yeah, I can do this, this is no problem. If my wife's in, in trouble or if my daughter, you know, or son or whatever, even me, myself, if I'm in danger, someone is threatening my life, I have no problem pulling my gun, pointing at them and putting a hole in the middle of their chest. But there's definitely been situations where people with that mindset have gotten into that situation and they couldn't do it. Either they morally couldn't do it, they, don't, they didn't want to kill anyone, they didn't want to hurt another human being, or nerves just got the better of them. They froze. Some people just freeze up like a deer in headlights. Just They're so blown away by the situation. It's so unreal, like, I can't believe this is happening, that their mind can't process, grab your gun, dummy. You know, <laughs> you're in trouble. So you don't know how you're gonna react. <clears throat> so having a laser is gonna greatly increase your chances of hitting a target more accurately because of the fact your motor skills are gonna be uh, diminished you're not gonna be able to have the time or the thought to really aim properly with your sights, all right? 
Now there's another issue I want to talk about in a second, which I think is amazing and really where the um, laser shines. Okay, pun intended on that one. But anyway, um, with a laser, let's talk about point shooting. A lot of times when um, you're in a defensive situation, and even like professional uh, gun training schools will teach this, point shooting. And basically what that means is that you don't really have a whole lot of time to go, all right, hang on a second, buddy. Uh, you shouldn't be in my house, but just hang on just for a second. Let me just, uh, let me get my good stance that I was taught and let me extend my arms, all right, elbow tucked in. Wait, just hang on a minute. Elbow tucked in, all right. Now front post is, it's in between, it's level. <sighs> buddy, hang on a second, all right? I gotta get my breathing right. All right, nice and comfortable, relax, exhale, and squeeze. Come on. You're, not, you're barely going to have time to go like this. Then fire. You know what I mean? And that's a quicker acquisition, obviously, of your sights. But, you know, we're all trained because we, we go to these ranges, and this is just how we're allowed to shoot for the most part. Now, some people are very lucky, and early on in my... Um, gun hobby, I guess you can call it. I was very lucky to have private property to do what I want, to train shooting from the, you know, the hip and to train shooting from the draw, you know, or drawing and wrapping the slide and shooting, you know, that kind of stuff. I was very fortunate to be able to do that. But a lot of you guys out there are limited. You know, you go to a range, you have range rules, you have very specific rules. You can't, I mean, you know, even Pete from the Army Channel, you know, he's, he's got a, a magazine, a limit, he can't even load up his magazines completely, you know, at the range. So it limits you. Some people can't, like I said, a lot of rangers won't let you draw from uh, concealed or even open carry. They don't want you basically pulling your gun out and shooting fast because that's increasing the possibility you're going to shoot yourself in the leg, Tex, or <laughs> actually no, no, no kick on Tex there. Tex is my friend, all right? I'm not going to comment on that. But uh, anyway, that was uncalled for. Shame on me. Um... Anyway, they won't let you do that because they don't want you shooting yourself. They don't want you shooting your buddy. You know, next to you, they want a very safe experience. So what I've really concluded here is that when you go to the range, you're not practicing for self-defense. You're practicing for range shooting, okay? You're practicing for target shooting. And that's awesome and that's fun. But you're probably going to find that if you do get into a, a defensive situation or if you watch these shows where they have actual footage of gunfights and, you know, shootings and stuff like that, it, you're not squared off. You don't have time for your breathing and time for your stance, you know? Half the time, you're not looking at your sights. It is. It's point shooting. It's, okay, there's the guy. I need to point, like, there. You know, I'm shooting that way. I ain't shooting over there. I ain't shooting up there. I'm shooting right there. You know? By the way, uh, the gun, like I showed, is safety checked, and there's no one in my house, and there's woods around me, so I'm not threatening anyone by waving the gun around. All right, I'm just trying to prove a point. Point shooting, that direction, that's pretty much it. It's this accurate, it's a body size accurate, all right? We're not trying to shoot dimes at a thousand yards here. We want to just hit the person so they stop attacking us, okay? That's all the purpose is. And a laser greatly improves your chances of that because not only do you have a very quick visual, there's where the bullet's going, all right? Where's it going? Right there. Whereas with the sights, I know generally where it's going, but now I have to kind of fine tune it. Nope, there it is. Let me, uh, let me count this off for you. All right, I'm gonna be very honest with you, okay? I'm gonna pull the gun from my hip, extend, you know, like I'm shooting, obviously, from a, a drawing position or a carrying position. I'm gonna line my sights up as best I can, all right, quickly as I can. I'm not gonna procrastinate or, or take my time just to make a point here. I'll do it as fast as I possibly can. And I'll say go when I pull it and fire when my sights are good. Now I'll do that with my, my fixed sights on the gun and then I'll do it with the laser. All right, I'm trying to hit this one inch black circle. So let me get behind the camera for a second here. And first I'm gonna do this with uh, um, just my regular sights, all right? So go when I grab it and fire when I'm ready. Go, fire. All right, now I'm gonna do it with the laser. Go, fire. So they're they're very close, obviously, but there is a split second difference. And as anyone who is a professional in guns and defense and anything like that, they will tell you split seconds count. And we all know they do. It makes sense, all right? Because a lot of times when someone's threatening you, and this is a person here, 
they're not coming to shake your hand. You know, they have a gun too. And it becomes an old west draw. Someone breaks into your house. They're crawling around, you know, being creepy, looking at your stuff. You hear a noise, you go to get them, all right? I can't imagine that feeling where people, they, they just, they meet eyes, all right? You have intruder over here, and then you have, you know, your homeowner right here. It's that moment where they, maybe the intruder's in the kitchen, and then the, the homeowner goes in the kitchen, and they both look at each other. Like, I can't imagine that feeling. And if the intruder has a gun, and the homeowner's got his gun in his hand, then it becomes the Old West. Who can shoot each other first, you know? And of course, they're both gonna be moving, they're gonna be ducking, trying to get cover, but it's gonna be a scramble. There's no time for sights. You know, it's point, it's all right, the guy's over there. That's where I wanna shoot, over there. So, time becomes a huge issue, and a laser saves you time, period. It's, it's that simple. It just saves you time. Even if it's a split second, it's definitely worth the time that it saves, okay? And at nighttime, or in a darker situation, when you're in your home, even with your lights on in your home, all right, I have daylight coming in through these windows, but I can see this fine, all right? That's gonna benefit me. When I go outside, when I carry, it's not gonna benef benefit me, that's why I don't have it. But I think it is a fantastic item to have on your home defense guns, whether it be a long gun, a shotgun, a rifle, or a pistol, doesn't matter. Uh, lasers are definitely the way to go. Uh, something else to consider is that you do calibrate your laser when you get it. You don't just put a laser on a gun and think that, all right, well now, uh, wherever that circle is, is where the bolt's going to go, because that's not the case. This laser is mounted all right, an inch, mostly an inch, uh, below where your barrel is. So up close it doesn't matter, because you're talking defense here. We're not talking about you know um, any kind of shooting challenges or competition. All right? As long as you hit the general area, you're okay. So up close doesn't matter, but if you get far away, if you calibrate your laser, or if you let's say you don't calibrate your laser, you just pop it on, even from 10 feet, it could be like a foot away from your target, and that's gonna make a serious difference, all right? So be sure that you calibrate, if you have a laser for your gun for home defense, what I would suggest you doing is find the very longest stretch from wall to wall in your house, all right? Maybe down a hallway or something. Let's say the longest part of your house is 15 feet. Stand at the furthest part and put a target up um, like a paper target like this and um, look at your laser and look at your sights and see if your laser is exactly where your sights are lining up all right because you want to calibrate this laser to the longest distance in your home this way anywhere you are it will be your calibrated um, sight or closer then you'll be fine but if you calibrate it for five feet and then you got a spot in your house that's 26 feet long and you're going to shoot someone it, it's going to be off and significantly off and you don't want that to happen. So just my suggestion for me to you. All right, uh, because this video is getting long, let's move on to the second part of it. Um, I want to talk about lasers for training purposes. I think lasers are fantastic training devices, okay? Now again, this, this gun right here is safe. Um, I only have snap caps in here and it is going to be on safety right now. Uh, I am going to dry fire it because I want to prove a point here, but I will show you again at this ejecting another snap cap there we go um, that it is just a snap cap here all right and it is on safety as well as to not damage the gun but I don't recommend dry firing rim fire guns at all period so let's just get that clear before someone goes uh, yeah. no don't do that <laughs> anyway um, all right so Here's my target, right? I got a one inch circle here. Now what's really cool about this is that the best thing you can do with your gun is, I know a lot of us don't have time to go to the range all the time, or the money. It's very expensive to shoot, okay? It's an expensive hobby inherently. You buy the gun, you think, all right, I spent my 600 bucks. Man, that was a lot of money, but I'm good. No, you're not good, because your gun is a piece of crap without your ammo. And your ammo is darn expensive, and you have to keep buying the stuff. You can't reuse it. Even if you reload, you're, you know, you can reuse your shell, but you can't reuse your, bu reuse your bullets. So, um, you know, it just stinks. It's expensive. You have to deal with the fact that, all right, you're in an expensive hobby. Now, if you purchase a gun for defense, don't skimp out on anything. Buy the best ammo you can. Okay, don't, you don't have to practice with it, but buy the best ammo you can. Buy the best holster you can. Make sure it's efficient, all right? If you, if it is an investment in your protection. So anyway, let's talk about 
um, using the laser as a training aid. Okay. Now I'm going to stand behind the camera. This camera is roughly five or six feet away from the target. Now me standing behind it um, is going to add another foot. So you're looking at about seven feet. All right. Actually, you know what? Before I do this, let me put my hand in front of the camera and turn the laser on. Now with one hand, and this is probably maybe three feet away, um, I'm going to hold this as steady as I can within that one inch black circle. Now you can see with one hand, with me talking a little bit, it's staying within the circle, right? But it's moving around. Not too much. Now if I hold two hands and I stabilize it a little bit better, let me get in front of the camera so you can see this, I can keep it a little bit closer towards the middle of the black but it's still moving around. I mean, we're not made of steel. You can't just lock into position. We have, you know, our, our blood's pumping through our veins, you know, our muscles are twitching. We, we're moving. You can't stay completely still all the time, right? And if we could, everyone would be a great marksman. We wouldn't have to practice. But yeah, we have factors here. Our breathing. If you're breathing heavy. I mean, I'm exaggerating here, but as you're breathing, you're moving around. You just, you cannot stay still completely. Even your heartbeat, you're moving. All right, so your idea is to try to use your muscles to counter all your little micro movements to keep that as steady as possible. Now, when I step back behind the camera, now I'm in my room here is 12 feet um, from the, the closet to the end of the wall. So I'm gonna put my back up against the wall and with two hands hold this steady on that uh, circle again. All right, I wanna show you the difference here. All right, by doubling my distance, I've easily doubled how much my, my dot is moving. Okay. Now I'm staying mostly in the black, but it is popping out every now and then. And you can see it's bouncing around in there like a little atom. You ever seen, you know, remember science class when you, or maybe you're still in science class. <laughs> I've got a lot of younger viewers and they're teaching about um, molecules and stuff and the little neutron and the proton and, you know, they're bouncing around. That's what it looks like. All right, it's unstable. Now, this doesn't pertain so much to, um, to defensive shooting because you don't need to you know, shoot a fly on someone's nose. You need to just hit the person. I'm talking about if you're practicing for target practice, for fun, this is a great aid that you can do in your home safely. Obviously, no loaded guns, no ammunition in sight whatsoever, and even though you know your gun's safe, point it in a safe direction as well. But you can do this for free all day long, as much as you want. And you can practice, you know, keep your hand to your side. I'm gonna pull this camera back a little bit. Keep your, um, there we go. Keep your hands to your side, you know, have your holster on, wear your normal clothes. Just do this in your house if you get some time. Maybe, you know, it's a great time is when you get home from work. Before you unwind for the day, you maybe change your clothes, take a shower, whatever you do when you get home. While you still have your, your regular clothes on, you know, whether it's work clothes or whatever, you have your holster. Do this. Go into a room by yourself, nice and quiet. Print up one of these targets for free. Pop it on your wall. You don't even need to print a target. You know, get a marker and just draw a little circle or trace a quarter or something. Put it on a piece of paper. Put it on your wall, right? And practice. Make sure your gun is completely empty. Especially now you're coming home. You have your loaded gun and stuff. Completely empty it. Put the ammunition in a different room. And I would suggest not having the magazine in the gun whatsoever. For this exercise, you don't need it, all right? We're talking about possibly a half an inch of feel on the bottom. Obviously, in some, some guns, this could be more prevalent than others, so it may feel a little bit empty on the bottom, but we're doing this for safety, okay? If you don't have a magazine in your gun and you rack your slide a bunch of times, there's no way you're gonna accidentally shoot something, okay? Be safe, please. But do this, get home, get in your whatever position you want, draw, aim, and fire. You don't have to dry fire. If you have a center fire gun, I would recommend it so it's a better feel. But do this. All right? And see where that laser is going. All right? See on the paper how much you're moving around. And practice. And it's free. It's totally free. So very, very cool. Lasers are awesome because you know what? You can have someone come up to you. There's a big confrontation you're fighting. And what do they do? They do this. And they push you out of the way. All right? And now you're on the ground. Have you ever trained shooting on the ground? No, guaranteed. All right, you don't go to your range. <laughs> Sorry, I attacked my tripod. You don't go to the range 
and then uh, you know lay down on the ground and point up and shoot. People are gonna laugh at you. They're probably gonna kick you out. They're gonna think you're a nutball. But that's realistic. If you're getting attacked like that, you don't you know you don't know what to do. You might put a hand up like this and then shoot your hands. You know you have no idea how to react. Now you can't always train for everything, but if you go to these you know professional um, gun fighting schools and defensive schools. I see video footage of this all the time and read articles and even read on forums. This is the best thing you can do for yourself is learn, okay, I'm on the ground. How do I defend myself? Because we know how to defend ourselves from a nice, simple, comfortable, squared off position. That's what we like. Comfort. We're used to that. We're not used to doing this and shooting while you're running away, you know, or someone on a flight of stairs. Now you're aiming, you're shooting like that. Can you shoot like that accurately? Well, you're not used to it. Can you do it in a split second? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. You know? There's just a, a plethora of different, different situations you got to get into. I would say it's very unlikely that a defensive role is going to be you behind a board with um, some barriers, you know, and a fan going. <laughs> That's not, it's not going to happen. So although the guns, uh, excuse me, the gun ranges are fantastic. And I think that if you have a range by you, go as much as you can because any trigger time is good trigger time. But keep in mind, if you carry a gun for defense, whether you're sitting in your living room or you know, walking to work or whatever you're doing, getting out of your car, there's going to be tons of different scenarios that you could have to use your gun. All right? We all train at the range, but what if someone's knocking on your window you know, with a gun in their hand from your car? Your gun is in your holster. It's awkward to get to. You don't know what to do. You feel like they're, gonna, they're threatening your life, that they're going to kill you if you don't comply with their demands. What do you do? Are you ready for that? I'm not ready for everything. No one can be. But at least I think about some stuff like this. That's all I'm asking you to do is think about it. That's all I gotta do. But uh, lasers I think are fantastic. I personally don't use one to carry because of the, the reasons mentioned. Uh, but I do use one all the time um, at home for, for these purposes. For trigger time. I have a laser, a mounted laser for my uh, rail on my Glocks. And uh, I also have a, uh, a laser for my, um, my shotgun. Uh, that I just mount. It's kind of a rig on the shotgun. It's not an actual mount. But I do that just for the same training purposes, just to see what it's going to be like. Specifically with the shotgun, because it is my, um, my home defense shotgun, is my 18 and a half inch pistol grip Mossberg. So that is definitely a point shoot gun. But it's not like I just point in the direction and everyone thinks that, you know, you shoot someone, you have a shotgun and it's going to clear, you know, a 10 foot area. Anything in the area is going to get hit. We've all seen videos, we've all read things that that's certainly not the case. And in fact, most of the time, you have a very closed um, you know, range with your shotgun. Your, your shot pattern is very tight with a lot of different ammunition, even in, in short quarters like that. Or I should say specifically in short quarters like that. It doesn't spread out much. Everyone thinks you know you, you shoot someone down a hallway with a shotgun and they get blown back like the movies, but that's just not the case. You can easily miss. You can have double lot buck and be pointing right at someone and still miss them. It's very possible. And don't forget, people aren't going to wait around for you to shoot them. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, come get me. No, they're going to go, holy, shit. you know, they're going to get out of the way. They're going to duck, dive, run, jump. Who knows what they're going to do? Throw something at you. Hit you in the forehead with a candlestick. So, uh, <laughs> immediately when I said that, I thought of uh, Colonel Mustard. I don't know why. So that's it. Lasers. Um, try them out. Check them out. I think they're, they're fantastic. Make it a part of your gun habits um, to get a laser for training. And then if you do like the laser, uh, and then you are someone who perhaps spends a lot of time in lower lit situations, you're out in the town, you got a nightlife, you know, you do, I don't want to say bar hopping, because you shouldn't, you know, be uh, getting into confrontation if you're drunk. But, um, you know, out in the town, you know, take your wife to a movie, girlfriend, whatever. You know, if you're going to be out where it's dark, or even just, you know, lightly, or excuse me, um, not a whole lot of light, not, not necessarily dark, but even dusk. Or if you're out and the majority of your time is spent indoors, you know, consider a laser. It may be good for you, it may not be good for you. All I'm saying is that, uh, think about it, it definitely has its pros uh, with a few cons as well. So that's all, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Something different, uh, I just had my gun out, just cleaning it periodically like I do, and I thought I'd make this video on the lasers. Um, perhaps I'll do a video on this, on the breakdown, uh, the disassembly. I know there's already videos on it, but I never did one, I don't think. Anyway, that's all. Take it easy, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Just remember, be safe, all right? Take care.